All right, folks, today we're going to talk about dual wielding long swords. No, we're not. We're going to talk about sword handling. So I got several here that I want to talk about and give you a bit of a hopefully visual impression of how they handle. And I bet you can't guess my favorite color. One thing I've noticed is sometimes people would comment on sparring videos with nylon practice swords and be like, oh, that's nothing. They're, they're super light and whatever. Use real swords. But the thing is, they are actually pretty close to real swords. Like the, the balance is exactly the same. The weight is a bit lighter depending on which long sword. Then we got a steel practice feather. It's a German word, Federschwert, meaning uh, either feather sword or spring sword could have one of two meanings. And uh, these are of course also used quite a bit. This is, feels almost the same as that. And here we've got a real sword, if you will, a sharp blade. This is made by Stefan Lockwood. And it's basically, it's a very similar design to the Brescia Spadona that Albion makes. And now this is slightly heavier than those two, but really not a whole lot. Keep in mind, I'm not in good shape right now. Since 2017, I lost quite a bit of progress and got chubby again. I've lost some strength, including explosive strength, which gives you speed and all. But even so, I, I'd say this is not terrible. So if I, if I just go through like a flow, this is not super slow, is it? I mean, compared to somebody who is in real good shape, it is probably slow, but you know, it's not like the idea that people have of knights with super heavy swords being like, as another example, one of the techniques that I showed with a practice sword, which is parry, drop down a cot, and rise immediately up to guard again. With this, same thing. And this is the reason why swords were not terribly heavy in history. You need that kind of speed and agility. It doesn't help you if you have a heavy, hard-hitting sword that would cleave someone's skull in two when it hits if you don't hit because they can easily evade your attack because of how slow you are. Of course, the stronger a fighter is, and I mean explosive strength mainly, the quicker they're gonna be with the sword. Like something like this to somebody who is way taller and stronger would probably be a single-handed sword and would probably swing it pretty easily. Uh, but there, there comes a, a point of diminishing returns. Like if, if you, you can't swing a sword faster than, than you can move your arm. Basically, if you reach the point where you're either strong enough or the sword is light enough where you can use it at the same speed as you can, you can move your arm, then that's, that's it. You're not gonna get more out of it. So let's compare to this katana here. If I do the same drill as before, I noticed I messed up the grip a little bit because I'm just not used to this wrap, but I like subjectively, I feel like this was about the same speed as the others, or at least close. Here's a bigger katana. This one I got just recently from Swords of Northshire, and uh, this was customized. This one actually has a battle wrap, so you don't actually have the manuki where the fingers wrap around. This is way more comfortable to me. And uh, this is also double edged, by the way. It's a bit of a, a unique one, pretty long handle. I don't, I don't really like to grip it all the way here because this feels actually a lot more awkward. And when I do that, I don't have the same control. It kind of wants to flip over. Whereas if I, if I put the hands closer together, it feels a little bit slower to me, but that may just be subjective. Uh, if I pick them both up, this one actually feels a little lighter. Okay, now, now I gotta put them on the scale. Okay, that's why I wanted to weigh them to double check because uh, this one here is 1.55 kilograms and this is 1.34. So this one is actually lighter. It doesn't really feel like it, so it probably has to do with the balance, but uh, they're pretty close. And because this is double-edged, I could do long sword shenanigans, you know, like a thwarting cot, squinting cot, etc. The only issue is 
you can really feel that a curved blade is just not very suitable for that because I keep noticing that as I, as I move it around, it wants to kind of tip and rotate in my hand, which throws off the edge alignment. So different techniques aren't really that applicable to different sword designs, obviously. But the basics, like an undercut, same thing. And I just apply long sword techniques and it's generally okay. Now here's where the main difference is. This is a Han Dynasty Chinese sword and this is way lighter than the others. It feels like basically half the weight, which it very well might be. They are, they are often under a kilogram. So this is extremely fast. Now, this, I think it's designed to be used with one hand, but it's a bit of a hand and a half. So this one is extremely fast. Even a sword as long as this is surprisingly light. Now here again, I have the issue. If I, if I try to hold it here, it, it just doesn't feel quite right to me because of the way I've trained. So if I hold closer together with the, with the hands, it feels a bit slower than the long swords because weight isn't the only thing that matters. It's also just the bulk of a weapon, which is why, you know, sometimes people argue if you have gigantic fantasy swords and they are made of some kind of super light alloy, you know, some kind of magical super metal, that would work, but you're still dealing with the bulk, which means it's, it's also hard to maneuver. Like for example, um, with a sword of this length, there are some angles I don't have available. Like for example, if I want to cut pretty, a, a fairly steep diagonal, chances are it's gonna hit the ground. So I'm a bit more limited in as to which angles I can throw. This big ass two-handed sword illustrates the point a little better. So if I throw a downward cut like this, clunk is gonna hit the ground. So I need to throw them wider to make sure that I have the range of motion. Now, of course, the taller you are, the more leeway you have, because basically you're, you're further off the ground. So you, can, you could throw steeper cuts and that would be fine. And uh, you can apply some long sword techniques to a large two-handed sword like this. Um, they, not all of them are terribly heavy. Some of them are pretty hefty. Others for the size seem relatively light. Again, for the size. Um, so <laughs> this is a little weird, you know, like crump <laughs> It's, it's a bit, it's a bit much. It's generally better with a, with a size, with this size sword to just keep it in motion. Just keep using the momentum and just, if you have to change direction, you can still do that. You basically let it swing until it comes to a natural stop and then you pull it around. At this point, I think most people are aware that the myth of super heavy swords swung by untrained brutes is just that, a myth. But hopefully I, I could give you a bit more of a visual impression of how these swords handle, because I don't know how well you can tell in cutting videos and uh, maybe this gives you a somewhat better impression. So even if you have a, a sword as large as this, you can absolutely do the techniques in the manuals. So what I'm doing here is a krumpau to deflect an incoming thrust or cut, and then I just wind into a thrust to, to parry immediately. I can do this on either side, of course. So boom. this is pretty quick. And that's another thing in sparring. You don't usually get uh, a good idea of the speed because the sparring gear is cumbersome. Now, it gives you a bit of an, a clue about armored combat. It's not quite the same because full steel armor would of course be heavier and bulkier and everything, but it's, it's very noticeable. I can tell you that with the, you know, there's fencing jackets, gorget, mask, um, joint protection, etc. 
for one, it's hot, so that fatigues you in and of itself. And then also just the, um, the range of motion is reduced. You have more weight on you. You have more weight on your, on your hands. That makes a difference. So that definitely slows you down to an extent. So yes, a, a knight in full armor, although he would have been trained a long time to, to deal with it and get used to it, would still, of course, be slower than if he fought unarmored. It's just not the turtle snail that they're sometimes portrayed as. So faster than you may think, but still slower, of course. There's another common technique. Somebody cuts at you, you step in with a, a false edge cut to deflect it to the side, and then you follow up with a sword cut. Also no problem with quickly changing direction. So you strike, you see the opponent, is about to defend and you just change to a different opening. I still haven't come up with a good way to organize and display my swords in a new place, by the way. It's just, there's so much to do and this is pretty low on the priority list because it's just, it's just for looks and convenience to an extent, but we'll get to it eventually. Maybe at some point I can show you like a wall with swords and whatnot, but it'll probably be a while. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.